as you do, I'm go. just I'm just going to uh, sort of welcome people in here. I am so excited about this for a bunch of different reasons. We got a lot of ground to cover in a short yeah. amount of time, and um, I uh, I just want to start by saying that anybody tuning in right now could not find a better place to land than looking <laughs> at this beautiful smiling mug. Oh, oh bless! One, one of the most incredible voices that I've ever seen live, and inspiring in a bunch of different ways. A gifted, blessed individual. This is my favorite ever. This is Liv Warfield. Thank you for oh, being bless. here. Thank you. Thank you for having me on. I'm I, excited to talk. I'm so. excited. To, I'm excited to hang. Listen. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So you're in Illinois. You're in Chicago right now. I am. I'm back where I was born and raised. So okay. this is good. I mean, it's been, I think, four years for me. Okay. Um, so it's been quite a change being in Portland. I think it was like 15 years I was in Portland. So it's a different, it's a bittersweet, you know, because sure. I miss Portland a lot and Portland raised me musically, but um, home, home is home, Peoria, yeah. Illinois, home, home and my parents and stuff. And Are they so, in Peoria? Yeah. Really? Okay. Yeah, my family, everybody is, is in Illinois. And, okay. Well, Peoria is not exactly Chicago, right? That's off the beaten path a little bit. Oh, that's off the beaten path for sure. It's smack dab in the middle, but yeah, but I'm closer. I'm closer to them. So Okay. Yeah. yeah. I my dearest cousin Jim Ferolo is in Peoria. He's oh, the, okay. uh, Yeah, he's the chief technology officer for Maui Jim sunglasses. They okay. just have, based in Peoria of all places. It's you okay. wouldn't have thought, right? But uh yeah, exactly. And and I was actually supposed to play St. Charles like this week. And Okay. Uh, oh and wow. Of okay. course, uh, that didn't happen, right? So yeah. But um I, uh, so well, let's talk about this. And so Illinois was home for you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Tell me about your, tell my, uh, come on up and raised up and tell me about your music sort of inspirations. Um, well, funny thing is I've talked to my friend about this as far as like musically, I kind of got started. Um, I was an, a lot of people who know me or don't know me. I was an athlete a lot of my life. Um, okay. I was a gymnast. I was a heavy elite gymnast for, years uh, so all of that started when I was three so music all the music came as I was training listening to KZ 93 on the radio classic rock um, so the music element was always hidden from my family so okay. being in athletics and stuff like that was just a, a lot of my focus um, so I kept it hidden from everybody and then um, you know I listened to a lot of church secular music was something I was not supposed to listen to I had the safety to listen to Whitney I had the safety to listen to uh, the Winans and the Clark sisters it was safety in that oh yeah um, but when I was training I heard uh, what was it the Rain Man soundtrack um, so I think it was like, oh, I go on and check them off, you know, that song. And then Etta James, oh, Etta wow. James sparked me. That was the, the wake up. Boom. Right like, on. That's it. You yeah. know, and at last, like I kept listening to that over and over again. Um, so I think that was probably the bud. Um, okay. and then also when I was, I tell everybody too, when I was eight, I knew I had something. I wanted to be a performer, okay? Yeah. So my, parent, my parents sat me in front of the TV to shut me up. They put the uh, Diana Ross, she, when she did this special, when she was changing in all these outfits. I think then I knew that's what I wanted to do. Really? <laughs> I think I knew. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I knew it. I, was it the I style was aspect too? Oh, yeah. yeah okay. I was drawn to it. Yeah. And, um, but after that, I just kept it closed off from everybody. And not until I moved to Portland. Um, and then I kind of discovered myself there because I just had to, I had a freedom, you know, I was sheltered, you know, a lot growing up, you know, for good reason, you know, my parents were doing their best to try to look out for us, but I think I was sheltered a little too much. Yeah. Um, and then when I moved to Portland, I just was like, Jumping out of a damn birthday cake. Surprise! Yeah. <laughs> like <a> freedom. <laughs> well, how, how old were you then? Um, I was nine, 18 or 19, I think. Okay. No, I was 19 and I just had turned 20. Wow. And okay. then um, I came to Portland to get married. Really? I did. And did that's the only reason why I got out to Portland was for that. And I didn't get married. Um, 
he left me. <laughs> I can see all this stuff now because I don't. I'm married. I'm married now, so it doesn't matter. Um, he left, and I stayed. And I came out to Portland on a track scholarship. I was originally supposed to go to Michigan State, but I was like, no, I'm following him there. And then school wasn't as important anymore. Um, only because one of my teammates was like, have you heard of this place called the ambassador? Yeah. He's like, I know you like to sing. And I was like, yeah. Oh yeah. And then he's like, you want to go sing at the ambassador? It's like a bar um, where you can sing all these songs. They have like a book of songs. It was like a bar, karaoke. Like what is karaoke? Again, living a sheltered life. Yeah. Hell that was. Got there. And no, it, I'm trying to think, is the ambas ambassadors off of Burnside, right? Or is it off Broadway? Or is it the Galaxy that used to be there? Was it the Galaxy? Um, Galaxy was up on 21st. That's off of uh, Burnside, and, right? Yeah, yeah. So Burnside and then uh, Northwest 21st. Okay, so the first one was the Galaxy. Okay, cool. I was there from eight o'clock, and they used to be open till four in the morning. Right. Every single day of the week. That was the fishbowl drinking place. That was the place. Yeah. And I just was so addicted to that. And um, I couldn't sing in front of anybody. So that honestly was the catalyst of me. That was the beginning of me like, oh my God, I'm up here on a mic. I'm on a stage. I made it. <laughs> um, do you remember the first song you sang in front of people like that? I'll Always Love You by Whitney. Oh man. Okay. Well, that's the, that's the make or break song for people to do karaoke, right? Yeah. Because if a girl can't sing that tune, she's pretty much showing her, you know, she's showing her cards right there. But of course. Oh my God. I, and then after that, I, I'm telling you, I kept going and um, I went there so much. I've, it's embarrassing to say, but I went there so much that I just was forgetting about classes and school and, and all of that. And um, I, I met a good friend of mine named Todd. Um, we used to go there all the time for competitions and you know, for the karaoke, you write out the slips, right. right? We used to sing the song so much. He's like, why are you throwing the slips in the trash? You keep your slips. So we made our little containers out of Altoid cans. Yeah. I still have mine with my name on it. You got it. Okay. Decorated. And he used to make me save all of my, I still have it. Yeah. You do. Like all the songs that I used to sing, they're like back of the stick. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I oh, still have that. Nice. And I bring my little, uh, tin can with me and I would just go through the songs and that's when I learned more about Chaka Khan songs and I was just honestly there I was filling my head up with a lot of music and I would go home and study the songs and you know part of competition <laughs> well I mean you, <laughs> you know because I, that yeah that was your education I mean you it just was. you swapped your college education for <laughs> live no you, you know it's not bad I mean you said you're embarrassed about it but think about finding your voice right there, right? This is your new identity. Yeah, it, it was. And and I was always a writer though, too. So okay. um, I wrote a lot. I wrote a lot. And I thank my mother for keeping a journal in my hands. She put a journal in my hands when I was like 13, 14, constantly writing. I was write, writing songs and stuff then. So that gave me a chance to actually start to write my own music. Wow. Um, I was writing songs in high school, um, but yeah, I, I really started to develop, to develop those skills. And then I reached out to a couple of guys in Portland, hip hop, Money and Lovin'. That was my very first live band experience. Okay. It was a hip hop group. Um, it started there. <laughs> then I went on the campus and um, I found a guitar player. I put up signs everywhere looking for a guitar player. I mean, it was just such a beautiful organic way of me really wanting to want something so bad. Yeah. You know what you, I mean? You were driven, the fire was there. Yeah, because if you really want something, I really mean that. If you want something that bad, you will do everything it takes to do it to get there. Yep. It wasn't work for me. It wasn't work. It was real like passion, like, I'm telling you, when I went through every avenue, I stood in line in American Idol when it first came out. I went no. to Houston. I got denied. That was such a brutal ass experience. <laughs> oh, I'm sure, man. Well, uh, I, I want to hear about those experiences. I was just going to ask you, mm -hmm. as a gymnast, I mean, competitive gymnastics is a it's a huge deal, right? I mean, there's 
from what I understand, I've never been one, but yeah. there is nothing else in your life allowed, right? I mean, it is that morning to night and evening. It's your oh yeah exercise. It continues you right. So you I mean, think, go ahead. I'm sorry. Do you feel like maybe you got some of that sort of drive for your passion in music by the you know that sort of early gymnastics experience? I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure. I I think maybe being focused so much um, has a has a lot to do with why I won't give up. Yeah. And um, yeah, I mean, at what age four or five or six, they teach you how to meditate. You know what I mean? You're on beams and you're on um, bars, and you could literally break your neck on any of these moves that you're doing. You know right. what I mean? You have to be focused, and I think I attribute a lot of that to being an athlete you know, and wanting something so bad. And also, even though gymnastics is an individual, but it's also a team, it's a team too. Yeah. So um, being a part of teams, learning to work together, learning to work with my bandmates, learning how to take in their ideas and everybody, you know, being cohesive has a lot to do. A lot of that training that I had definitely tied into really? my aspect of music. Oh yeah, I yeah. think so, for sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, well, there's, I think I would bet that there's a lot that happened between the time that you moved out here. You said you moved out to get married, moved out for a guy. Um, first of all, I guess lucky for Portland that that happened. No matter what happened with that relationship, Portland changed, you know, because of you. Um, mm -hmm. at, at that point, I know, like, um, man, I mean, the original soul sister here in town, Linda Hornbuckle, right? It was uh, I, I just what a gift, and you know, she she made a you know a lifetime mark on this area. You know, and there was a little transition you know, because I know that you guys did some work together, yeah. but I, a lot of people really consider you to be that evolution of Linda's voice. Oh, you know? wow. It's cool, right? But, wow. Um, but this, whoever this was, right, that you came out here with, was he supportive of your uh, attention on music? Did he, did he encourage you to go out and sing? And no. All right. No. All right. He so was you, more like, what do you do? Doing, you know what I mean? Like, it was of that spectrum. You know what I mean? He yeah. just was like, "Music? What? Yeah. Are you crazy?" And, um, <laughs> and how about your uh, go back to the books? <laughs> and, and your so that was kind of my, you know, his. He wasn't that supportive of that. I don't think he really cared. Okay. Here we go. You're kind of frozen. Oh yeah, sorry about that. Yeah, but you dodged a bullet in a big way, right? I mean, if it, you know whatever happened in that relationship, if you found your voice and you were tenacious and driven and you went after it so much, I would think that being in a new environment, you know, you mentioned kind of that sheltered life where gymnastics, you know, gymnastics was it, and your education and maybe parents were sort of um, holding you to, fast to that. I would bet it was tough to reach back out to your parents and say, hey, by the way. Yeah, I'm not doing school anymore. I'm gonna be an artist. I'm gonna be a musician. You know, it it was like my parents. I love them. They uh, I say this with love. They were so upset. Okay. And the person that came out to see me was my brother. Okay. Because my mom, I guess I'm sure my mom and them were like, go out there and go see what she's doing. You know, <laughs> and we don't want to go see what the hell's happening. So I think I had a gig before I had already been performing with Brian Foxworth, Joey Porter, Silky, and I had already had all of this under my belt. And that's quite some time. That was, that was probably already like a year in or a year and a half in or something. And then I had my gig at Jimmy Max. Okay. And uh, my brother came and my brother was like, what? <laughs> like, yeah. We're what? Like, he was so excited for me and like, I need to tell mom and dad, like they need to go out here and they need to come out here and see you like, this is not a game. Yeah. And I was like, yes, please. Like somebody from the family, please like vouch for me. Yeah. <laughs> and I, that like not doing school anymore and not being a researcher at Portland State University as my job job was, was a great job. Um, it, she, it's, it's a good thing. <laughs> Like she's good, and so um, my parents finally came out, and they were just like, "Wow, good." We, we didn't know. We like we're sorry. We didn't know because you never showed us. Right. You never saw any signs that you were a singer. Like yeah, 
you never did any of this around us. And I was like, well, there you go. <laughs> yeah. What a, I mean, cause if you're 19, 20 years old at that point, yeah, you know, so many people at 19 and 20 are kind of lost about and a, a focus in their life. You know, if you're, you're blessed, if you've found a voice, you found a path yeah. that you're so committed to that, you yeah. know, you're put on this planet to do that. Right. Yeah. And, yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah. And for them to see this, even yeah, it might've been scary. Cause you know, you think your parents hear that their sons or daughters are going to be a musician. That's like such, oh. a, such a disappointment, <laughs> you know, for so I mean, many people. Straight up, it's like, yeah. oh, are you serious? Right. Like, well, there goes their life. Yeah. <laughs> That's what in mind they're like, oh my God, like out of all the things. Yeah, right, right. Couldn't you just be a stripper? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, come on now. Out of all the things that you like, that you were good at, yeah. you chose this to do. Right. Like, and then I, when they saw it, I, I really think they understood and they got it. And um, did yeah, they see they, you play live? What's that? Did they Sorry. get to see you play live early on? They saw that first. They saw me perform live, and they were like, "Oh, yeah. whoa, what?" Yeah. And these are all you know songs that you've written, like. Oh, so yeah. it was just kind of, it was a wake up call for them. I mean, it it's not like they switched overnight. It's right. still a lot of like okay like that's cute you got a couple of gigs here and there yeah you no know, and <laughs> laying around in portland you know um but i think as they saw the impact and a lot of stuff that i started to do um they understood quickly like okay my creative side like yeah i'm using the writing that my mom so put the journal in my hands for i think she understood then do you yeah. still journal oh absolutely do you every day uh, every week, not every day, but every week I try to at least. Yeah. Yeah. Such a healthy thing. Right. I mean, Oh yeah. All of yeah. that meditation, yeah. especially right now. Right. I mean, the world is upside down in a big way. Everybody's kind Absolutely. of. We're, Absolutely. We're, uh, I mean, for my mental health, for yeah. sure. I, yeah. I, I always tell people I never shy away from the fact that, you know, I've had some mental health issues I've had to deal with and, you know, it's hard to, be truthful to yourself in situations like that because you know life can just dump yeah. you know and if you don't learn how to take certain tools which i've taken meditation and journaling and stuff like that to kind of you know when you else there fix it you have to figure out a way to fix it and find a center and i've learned that you know so so yeah what a gift man yeah you know, I mean, that's something I didn't know about you, but you know, I keep finding little nuggets of inspiration, you know, about mm -hmm. your development. And you said that you'll be honest, you know, and acknowledging that it's a difficult thing for people to talk about, right? Absolutely. It, it, there's a stigma associated with any kind of um, mental um, difference with people, right? So people yeah. are, it's hard for people to talk about depression or an anxiety and, and it's a real thing. I mean, everybody has it to some extent. And yeah. And it, men especially, right? It's really hard yeah. for men to talk about their vulnerability. Absolutely. And I, I, uh, I, I love the fact that speaking about vulnerability, listening to your music is, um, it's something that it, like your progression and what I've listened to on your releases, mm. it's changed, right? I mean, I've heard uh -huh. this evolution. Um, I was a big fan of like Anita Baker's voice early on. Yes. You know, that she just had this soulful thing that was, romantic right when yeah. i think about like uh um the the sort of intimacy that went along with her music yeah i i, I just it's really rare for somebody to kind of move somebody that for move me that way and yeah. i heard i heard elements of that you know mm -hmm. in a lot of your writing mm -hmm. and uh and i would imagine that kind of finding yourself centered and getting to know you and expressing yourself and learning more about your voice yeah you hear that evolution in your music yeah, wow. Yeah. But the rock side of stuff has yeah. come out like on the unexpected, man. Yeah. Are you kidding me? Mm -hmm. you know, like that. So, so you can hear because you mentioned kind of growing up and you had sort of a rock influence as well. You can say, yeah, yeah. so as you're journaling, you're finding your voice, you're finding a way to express yourself in written form. Mm -hmm. And then as you're, you got out and you're expressing yourself on stage where you could, you know, you could express that creativity. Did you have, other influences that evolved, like Etta James was your first, you said, but sure. who did you feel like kind of like, um, kind of drove you along the way? Hello, uh -huh. pup. Hey, buddy. Uh -huh. 
Got a um, Sorry. No worries. Okay, one second. Hey, no problem. So, so I did. I had um, Donny Hathaway was my, as far as his voice mm -hmm. moved me. Like when I did the first Embrace Me record, um, a lot of that inspiration, a lot of the writing came from listening. I was like obsessively listening to Donny Hathaway. Okay. Not only alone from his voice, but the writing, something, the writing in that. Um, so I, I attribute a lot of that embrace me writing to listening to a lot of Donny Hathaway. Okay. So, um, so that was definitely a huge influence then at that time for embrace me. And, um, I'm trying to think, um, uh, so Donny Hathaway, um, Nat King Cole was a huge influence and Etta James. Yeah. Nat King Cole for sure was a huge influence in, in that area. And also, um, uh, I can't think of her name. Lord, forgive me. Um, uh, I'll think of her name, <clears throat> okay. but I can't get it right now. But she was another one for the Embrace Me record as far as stylistically, sure. um, the writing and stuff like that. And just, um, I'll get her name. It's killing me. And I know it's like right there. Phyllis Hyman. Oh, cool. Right. Okay. So um, <clears throat> there's a certain kind of grace that I wanted to fill mm. in that record. And then, um, so Dave Whipple did a lot of, um, he wrote, like, Dave was so cool. Like, that was my magic partner. And Sidel Jones were like my, I don't know. It's like a match made in heaven as far as the writing on that album. And Sidel was, started working with earlier on, right? Like, right oh, yeah, 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 Sidel, yeah. Right after it, Silky? Uh, jo uh, Joey Porter, that was Silky. Yep, yeah, Joey Porter, and then, but right after that, you started working with Sidel, I think. Sidel, yeah, yep. Yeah, yeah. Sean, yep. Sean Foote was telling me about that. Uh, Woody, that, yeah. Yeah, man, I, I love that boy, I do. Oh. Yeah, he loves you. There's so much magic in that group. Yeah, um, oh, what about your heavyweights, man? So much love and magic in that, in that group. So, um, yeah. Uh, yeah, JD says, that was the Wednesday night gig. It's yeah, <laughs> that, <laughs> that was the Wednesday night gig. <laughs> That's awesome. That, yes. I um, okay. So so you started working um, with Sidel, and then yeah, the, um, and embrace me like came up. How did I? I didn't even notice. Was that? Uh, this is kind of jumping ahead. But did you have interest in record deals at that point? How how did you evolve in terms of releasing stuff and get support? Um, I had there was a uh, a guy that I met in Portland who believed in what I had. And um, so I had support. I didn't have any record labels. He was a label of sorts. Um, and I'll leave it at that. Okay. No worries. And, um, so, and it was really, he was really supportive. You know what I mean? In that yeah. way. And that, that record, that embrace me record was my lifeline, my hard work, my blood, my sweat, my tears. And it was beautiful for what it was because I'll tell you what, I learned how to be, I learned how to be an artist. Like that was me being thrown in the fire for real. Um, understanding who I was as an artist, but wanting something so bad that I wasn't uh, checking off my list. Yeah. I was singing and writing and putting it on record and putting it out, right? Yeah. So I learned how to be an artist through that whole experience. Again, that in, that Embrace You record was my baby because it was all the emotions that I put into figuring out who I was on record. Yeah. Who I was. Like, I had Bernard Purdy on that record. Like, oh, you feel what I'm saying? <laughs> so, I mean, like, all of these amazing things were happening to me so fast that I didn't quite understand how to... Like, man, this, like the experience of it all, right? Yeah. Um, and working with Prince now, oh. I'm like knowing my business. Yeah. Right? right. And knowing who I am as an artist, 360. Yeah. So um, I love that record, but I also learned a lot about myself and being an artist in that record, like big time. You know, mm -hmm. there's something special I'm sure any artist will say about their first album, you yeah. know? <laughs> so, um, so yeah, yeah. 
So I had a lot of support. I had a lot of support. He supported me a lot on that first record, but I, I, if I had a chance to do it a different way, I would possibly. Really? Yeah. Well, you grew up during that time, obviously. I I mean, that, that's a point that that was, I mean, you had the education and then this yeah. is almost like a phase one of your, you know, uh, right? so, um, if you could change things, what would you do differently, you think? Um, I, I think I would, I will protect my music. Okay. Yeah. I would, um, uh, I would protect my music more. I will protect my jewels. My yeah. music and my songs are like my babies. Yeah. So, um, that's all. I just, I would protect my music, you know? I, you know, we don't have to go into that deep, but I think everybody that's been in this music business probably has a lot of that first experience, right? You know, I mean, just because they are your babies, right? You're so excited yeah. to get the music yeah. out there. Yeah. Um, that you, as an artist, the last yeah. thing when really has experience in is business, right? And so if you yeah. don't, if you don't have a, a business mind where you've got, uh, you know, licensing and publishing yeah. and all that stuff squared away. It, yeah. it, it'd be, it'd be fantastic if yeah. there was a crash course and all of that stuff ahead of time. Oh right? my God. You know, like, like, <laughs> yeah. uh, man, you know, I got a, like my 21 year old son, he's a hip hop artist. He wants to go to LA. He's got yeah. a couple, a couple records out. And mm. I told him, you know, he's an amazing drummer as a drummer. I told him, man, you've got all the chops you need to be a rock drummer out there. Yeah. What you yeah. really need to do is learn the other end of the business, man. Because if you want this yeah. career, you've got to know how to hang, first of all. And yeah. you've, you've got to be smart and understand. Yeah. Protect yourself. Know yeah. where, you know, know those speed bumps ahead of time. And I and like you while you said you had a lot of help and a lot of people sort of supporting you. Yeah. Maybe didn't have somebody looking out for you and and kind of saying, Hey, live. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. important. I mean, yeah. with any with any um with all of it, you know what I mean? Like I didn't quite understand. Again, I was so excited in making music, yeah. just making it yeah. that um, I just didn't understand. I didn't understand uh, just music lingo, the, the business side of it, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I think it's so important for artists um, now to just kind of delve into that a little bit. Even the ones, even the ones that ask me, even independent artists that are young and ask me like, what do I do? I'm like, man, first, yeah. first you just, you know what I mean? Like get on your business, yeah. get on your stuff, you know, make sure you keep, <laughs> keep everything like that you have it. Yeah. Um, so first thing for me, I had to make sure. Do you mentor a lot of young artists? Um, no, yeah. I, I'm there with people need to, if yeah. people need to ask me questions. I mean, I don't mind it. And people are like, Liv, can I talk? I'm always an open door with that. You bet. You know, always. Yeah. That, Cause that, I had it, you know, that, uh, it's interesting that, uh, the community in Portland, I mean, Portland has such an amazing base of incredible musicians you know the, yeah. the cat that was playing you know brian fox were playing drums for you and sean Footy right, on right. bass you know joey porter all those guys are real heavyweights anybody yeah. in town recognized your value and your worth as you're getting up mm -hmm. there but uh i would imagine that you kind of you know it's easy to become a big fish in a small pond in portland but you reached out a mm -hmm. lot farther than portland i got to share a picture with people here because this is one that uh I, you know, I, I, I want to know behind this, tell me the story about this evolution and where did, uh, where did this partnership oh. come from? Oh my God. I, yeah, man. I honestly, if I died with this kind of experience in my back pocket, I could say, okay, man, I'm good. I, uh, you know, I, I've done what I need to do. <laughs> how, how did this happen between embrace me and your partnership with Prince? Like how was, how did you discover you? How did, uh, how did this connection happen? Um, I was finished. Like I was at a point where I was done <clears throat> um, with the whole independent artist thing. I was like, okay, I've done it. I've tried it. I've yep. gotten as far as I could. Amazing thing happened done. And then um, at the time I was working with Rick and then I, I think I was doing a show in Atlanta okay. and I saw this woman named Marva King and she just was dressed extravagant like I was like who is this just like I was already just attracted to like her vibe anyway just like whoa like when you when she came in the room she came in the room okay yeah. 
Marva King. And so thought nothing of it. So Rick, who was managing me at the time, was like, uh, Liv, he called me up. He was like, Marva saw you, I think in Atlanta. And Prince is looking for another background singer. And he was like, we should send your video. And I go, ah, uh-uh. like. Why no? No. This wouldn't Don't happen? Send my video. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm, no. Like, I, you know, automatically, I just, I cut myself out of the equation. Like, this is, that wouldn't, that's never going to happen. So what's the point of even trying? Really? You just didn't think you, you weren't confident that it would, anything could come from it? No. Yeah. Really? This okay. was like, ah, oh, this is nothing. And then. Um, they were like, no, I think you should think about it. I was like, no. And then um, they sent the video anyway. Which video? Uh, I did, I'm trying to think what, um, I'm sorry. It's okay. Um, two seconds. No worries. So as Liv's uh, popping up, we talked before we got on this conversation. She's got a couple of puppies. And uh, I also have my little black pug and he keeps wanting to get on camera too. But um uh, you know, we're all quarantined, right? Okay, Liz, sorry about that. No, I was just saying to people, like, we're all quarantined, including the pups, right? So they want Yeah, exactly. They're quarantined, we, too. We give, we give them a little grace, man. It's all yeah. cool. All right, and so the video. Which one? So he apparently saw the video, and um, For they didn't song? tell me. Uh, oh, Gimme Shelter. And I think it was in an event at, uh, I did for Portland. I can't remember what it was somebody videotaped it okay. and um they were like we need to send that video i was like what they got a call three months later out of the blue i think i had i think i was doing my last show i was like okay this is it i was in arkansas i'm not doing this anymore cool this is it so i was getting a full weave i was sitting <laughs> in arkansas getting my hair done getting a weave put in next you know i get a call and this lady calls from minnesota this was an assistant at the time she's like hi this is so and so um, Prince would like to call you and talk to you. I'm thinking like, what? Mm. Well, this is, right. this can't be yeah. for real. Literally, she's like, he's gonna call you from an unknown number. So he calls me from an unknown number. I've got half of my weed hanging <laughs> died. And I was like, hold on, hold on, I gotta go take this. I gotta go take this call. You know well, what you, I mean? Like, you didn't make Prince wait to you finish the weed? I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. I'm like, uh, I gotta take this call like right now. Yeah. So I took the call and he's like, Liv. And I'm like, yeah. He's like, this is Prince. Oh my God. He's like, uh, like your voice. Do you wanna go somewhere warm? I'm thinking like, of course, this, this is, of course. And I was like, yeah, he's like, I'm in LA. <laughs> Do you want to come? And I was like, and here's the thing is I've told somebody before and they're probably like, you're crazy. But I was like, I can't go because I have a gig commitment. I can't be there. Like I can't fly out the next day. And people are like, well, are you crazy? I would drop everything. Like, right. hell no, I'm going, you know? So I was like, I can't do it. And he was like, don't worry. Come to Paisley Park. Wow. I'll meet you at Paisley. We'll set it up. So I hung up the phone and I was like, okay, this is like, it's, this is stupid. This is not happening, oh. like, real for real. Yeah. So um, I think a week later, two weeks later, I went to Paisley. I was in the room, anxiously sitting there, just tripping, like, when is he going to call? I didn't see him until the nighttime. Really? I had been there all day long. Like, when am I going to get the call? When am I going to get the call? Is he going to call us? Do we go there? And Marva was like, okay, calm down. When he wants you, he'll call. And wow. he'll over, come get us. Well, and I'll can, I, you, can I ask you? Sorry, I don't want to interrupt yeah, you. Go ahead. Did mm-hmm. he give me, say, set it up saying, hey, I kind of want to think about a couple of songs, maybe learn a couple of things before you show up? Or did he just say, just show up and we'll talk when you oh, get here? No, I had. Nothing. No, I had the catalog. Oh, yeah. let me tell you, I had two days to learn the catalog. He asked you to do this or you just did it? I, I'm trying to remember. No, he didn't ask me to. But either Marva, I think, told me, like, girl, have them songs down. Yeah. yeah. Know the hits. Right. And I'm like, ooh, this man, do you know how many hits this man has? Oh, yeah. And, this right? I mean, having songs to learn, you know? And- and when he plays, right? I mean, it's a different vibe than the records, oh. right? So, so yeah. did you go back and start and study a bunch of the like oh. the, li- the live stuff so you could learn that kind of arrangement? I had like 50, 60 songs. Oh my god! 
I mean, I, cause in you know, it's kind of like, he was just, he could just pick one out of the bag. Right. And, um, oh my God, I just keep thinking back to that experience. I was like a nervous wreck. Anyway, I got there to Paisley. He came there to the front door, you know, just like, <laughs> you know, like somebody at my own home yeah. welcoming me, man, like, how are you? Like, welcome. Mm -hmm. Like, are you hungry? Do you want to eat? How are you feeling? Like, not like some secret service with the glasses right, on yeah. bodyguard like you know yeah. let me take you to his you know yeah. chambers or something it was <laughs> it was never like that That's i mean so... he was just peace yeah and um he got to know me we sat down we talked we broke bread we ate and i of course i was like no i'm not hungry he was like relax you're hungry yeah let's eat food let's talk let's and I still was a nervous wreck. And then after that, we went into the studio and he started playing and I just was like, don't fangirl out. Cause I was yeah. losing my mind, just sitting there watching him, just like an angel yeah. with his hands, just hmm. gracefully graced that piano. And he's just, I think it was Marva, Shelby and I, we just started singing and then boom. And he's wow. like, I love your voice and we want you to come back. And I was like, I made it. I passed. Yeah. I can't remember what song. I think we probably sang a couple of uh, Pointer Sister songs, maybe, or some Sly, Sly and Family Stone. I can't, uh, vaguely, I remember a little bit of that, but, yeah. and some songs off of that 2010 record, I think, okay. just to hear our blend or whatever. Yeah. But yeah, what and my cool. life changed. Big time. Completely. Yeah. Completely. Get the fact that um, you had had enough of a diverse influence before going in there, you know, yeah. and you had this experience of meditation and kind of being grounded and centered probably really helped you out a lot in terms of him feeling your energy, right? Maybe. I, I Maybe. would think. Like, I, well, he knew I was, I honestly did not, I didn't come from singing with a lot of, singing backgrounds with a lot of people, Sure. right? Yeah. backgrounds with my own stuff a little yeah. bit but not others so yeah. much um so i guess it was just i don't know he he trusted me but he also knew i was just very new to it yeah and he trusted it i i know that i know that now because i know he he believed in me you know he was like i'm willing to give you a try yeah. i probably could have gave some other girls that i know that can come in here and just slay this gig and no notes and know this and, and know that he gave me a chance because he knew I really wanted, I wanted to learn. Yeah. Um, I was so anxious to know more, you know, about his performance and just like, I, I mean, as a kid in a candy store, like, oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> what is happening? Yeah, I mean, but you were young and malleable, malleable. You know, he could see probably that because that's one thing that he's always done, right? He's, yeah. he's, he's taken protégés and developed a diamond from the rough, you know, and it's not yeah. that you were rough going in. But sure, he, sure. But, uh, you know, I, we talked before when we discussed this conversation. Yeah. When I was a teenager, I wanted to be Prince. I didn't know that I couldn't, <laughs> right? I, I just, his, his gift was untouchable, man. It's yeah. to this day, my favorite artist on the planet. Yeah. And, and the influence, you know, like the, he had on music is, is insane. But you could see where his influences were, too. Absolutely. You know, and, uh, and I think he always paid homage to that, you know, that yeah. origin. But I love the fact that, you know, you had people along the way kind of putting him in touch with you. So you mentioned yeah. um, um, that at that point, they were just going to be doing backup vocals. Do you plan on touring? Did he say, all right, so this is the plan. We're going to go out on the road. And, and Yeah. Oh, or, yeah. yeah they, so. I mean, he let me know that. I don't think he knew. I don't think he said anything about touring art off the bat. I think it was just doing shows. Okay. One offs. And that was totally fine. And I think that's when we started to do the 2010 album, we finishing it up. I think he had already started on it and uh, we did 2010 and then that's when you're like, he's gonna go tour with the 2010 album. And so I was like, touring, okay, here we go. And yeah. then um, I remember my first, my first gig gig was in LA and okay. I think Nokia theater. And that's when I really, really had to like step my shit up. Yeah. Because it wasn't just like doo-wop, side to side, you know, snap yeah. here, 
your snap there. I had to quickly, that's when, you know, I was like, okay, I'm, I was an athlete, so I can like hang from side to side or whatever. But when he threw that tambourine in my hand, child, I just was like, oh no, I gotta, (laughs) (laughs) I was like, oh man. So, and then, you know, drum pads and all this Mm. stuff. And just, I had to just learn how to sing and do all the parts and listen to, because the thing about him, he's very part playing. Yeah. Part, he's a part. Don't just hit, just don't hit the clap pad right there anytime on the two and four. Yeah. No, the clap pad actually goes on the one. And you got to sing your part that's not really on the one. So I had to really learn all aspects and all sides to him, not as even him being a director, but him, the performance element. Wow. Like you can sing all day long and have all these songs tight sitting in a chair, yeah. um, but, move, but moving around and stuff and dancing and stuff like that, that, that element really, I had to learn quick. Yeah. And with Shelby being there and uh, Shelby J being there, I had to, I had to, step my game up because I was like, man, these girls are not playing around. So he saw I was probably struggling a little bit in the beginning, but I was like, no, I got this. <laughs> Just smile and like, <laughs> you know, and I told somebody this in LA when we first had a rehearsal, um, you know, I was timid singing in the beginning. Like yeah. I was singing my part, but I really wasn't singing out loud. And then we were singing Sly and the Family Stone songs. And um, I th- I'm trying to think it was, ah, everyday uh, maybe it's everyday people anyway i wasn't singing that strong marvel looked at me like okay girl you you better start singing because he is not playing around right now yeah because he walked out of the room kind of pissed and then i was like all right you want me to belt this out like i mm-hmm. belted it out then he stops then he turns and if you guys know how prince walks you know he kind of mm-hmm. has a, a little walk kind of like there she is uh-huh. like basically he he said i could have somebody up in here to replace you in seconds yeah and i was like mm, okay he would i was like you never have to ever tell me that again <laughs> if you want me to sing out i'm gonna sing out so um there's a lot of things i had to learn and that he taught me about singing in arenas and mm-hmm. doing different vocal tricks and runs and arenas and how sometimes that stuff sticks and it doesn't stick so you have to learn how to hold hold notes more than trying to acrobat sing and little stuff like that. Just, you know, little things that I just, I didn't know. And I learned. Oh yeah. Those are not things you learn at the galaxy, you know, doing karaoke, (laughs) man, you know, what an amazing education, right. From the greatest performer on the planet. Oh yeah. Without question. Yeah. Yeah. Without question. Yeah. And that evolution, I mean, were you still writing your own music kind of, or, or was, was your life consumed with Prince's gig at that point? Um, I was still writing my own music, okay. but my life was very consumed with Prince, yeah. Prince gigs and, and I did not care. Right. I wanted to do it 24 seven because that being with him required an absolute love for music that if you want to wake up at three o'clock in the morning and do music, cool. Yeah. Some people can't take that. He did so, that a lot, right? A lot. I mean, after shows. I mean, yeah. we do an arena show for four hours. Mind you, we were there at like, what, maybe noon. Right. We're not done till midnight. Then he books another gig somewhere else at a different club and we're there till four in the morning. You really have to love it. Oh, yeah. And um, I absolutely loved it. And I loved him for just his 24 seven love of just him being music all the time. You bet. Man. Unapologetically all yeah. the time. That Wanting to try new things all the time. Yeah. Oh. You know, it, 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 I, you know, that's interesting because if that timing was again, this is like sort of phase two of your education, right? Mm-hmm. The development of, of Liv Warfield, because I hear <laughs> on the unexpected, that record to me, uh, man, I can't get enough of it, right? That that record is the perfect, mm. it's the perfect like road trip album for me because it's got everything. Oh, it, that's it did, awesome. It's huge. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's um, boy, it's a word I'm looking for. It's like, it's got this cinematic kind of element, right? With the big bombastic vibe. And then you got big rock. You got so much sultry in like mm. your show 
oh my god that it's incredible man goosebumps you know like that it's that if if you guys that are watching this thing don't have this record yet you got to go out and get this but, well, but start to finish it's rec and, and did he have a, a, a hand in helping write that with you or was this all you no I, the only two songs that he helped us with was your show which is insane mm, yeah and unexpected but i have to really throw down and show love to my portland that's portland yeah that creating that record writing that record is portland musicians and ryan waters in seattle that specific northwest baby all day long right on um and to, really quick i have to say something about this record yeah. because when I, at the very trail end i i think he was transitioning to start doing third eye girl stuff right and so I came to him and I said, you know what? I really want to do a record. Do you think you can help me do a record? And he's like, <laughs> like Really? You get the sneer? <laughs> yeah, at first he was like, you know, kind of, well, what you got, yeah. you know? And so I was like, all right, so I'm gonna put out Why Do You Lie first. Did you show it to him? Did you say, this is what no, I got? He all just right. put it out. All right. And so he was like, okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> Did it have the big horns and everything then? The original version of it? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, and um, and so he was just like, and actually that was a cool, Why Do You Lie was before then, was super old with KP from Portland, another Portland situation. Okay. Um, and Dave Whipple too. And uh, finally I was able to put live element on it. And then anyway, he basically, he was like, all right, so if, are the, is the rest of the record like that? Like you got more songs like yeah. that? I'm Bet. He was like, all right, I'll help you do this record. Right on. So then he said, um, do you want to do it at Paisley or do you want to do it in Portland? I said, Portland. Yeah. Um, because I think he knew, I just, I wanted to keep my sound, my sound. Yeah. And I wanted, and he knew that too. He, I think he knew like, you already know who you are. Um, and I don't want to come in and shift and change all of that. He's like, I'll help you, but you know what you want to do. And then, um, so after that, he, he led us at the Red Barn in oh, that's <laughs> Oregon. Right. And he let us record that record. And Phil Lasseter, who wrote all the horn parts for that album, is fantastic. The NPG horns killed it. Oh, um, it was just a, it's such a fantastic experience. Like that whole album. And uh, I told him, he's like, so what are your ideas? I said, well, I'm kind of a, uh, I love old black movies, black exploitation. I hate that word, but um cleopatra jones oh yeah so i said i said uh i really wanted if i was to create the soundtrack for that what would it sound like so that's oh, what man. i felt the unexpected feel like okay so um so yeah yeah I, you know i would bet i mean i know that he was a big lover of film too right so i would bet that you yeah. telling him that he probably just completely vibed with that he's like all right yeah i i can i can get behind this 100 percent. yeah 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 man i uh i'm so glad to know this part about that record and and just the like, experience with him i really wish i could have seen you guys play live because i would bet man i you know just knowing how much a fan of your stuff i am anyway and mm -hmm. how much i love prince that uh yeah i just think what a gift right to, for this experience. yeah you, yeah uh, you have any like shows that just stand out to you that you think okay man this was uh if you know some people aren't really at a bucket list, right? Because they want to be living in the here and the now. But for me, I could pinpoint a couple of my own shows that I think if, uh, if that was the last show I ever played on the planet, that I would go down all right because it, that was exactly how I wanted it to be. Was there one yeah. like that with Prince? <sighs> There's no one that okay. I can yeah. narrow down. Like I want to tell you every experience, every, every show was like fireworks, like every show. A, you don't know what you're going to get. So you're in for a surprise every night. Sure. Every night. Um, I just wish I can go back to those moments when I'm on stage with him because you really, you feel a surge of energy. Yeah. And you, and I, I have to stay, I had to stay focused because you could get so caught up just staring at him. You know what right. I mean? Yeah. Um, but yeah, just hit the surge of energy that came off of him was insane. And there's so many shows that I could probably tell you <laughs> that even Shelby, Elisa, and I, 
but there's so many stories, some stories we like, I like to keep to myself, yeah. you know, but surely <laughs> there are a lot of moments, oh, yeah. um, you know, us almost falling off stage and <laughs> Shelby almost, I mean, Shelby falling off stage <laughs> and getting right back up and getting into it or me like, you know, I mean, there's just so much of it and yeah. laughing and I miss his laugh. I'm, mm. I'm, us having a good time i miss him um playing his acoustic guitar and us sitting around just in a living room or something like this and us just singing together and yeah. him you know giving me soprano or giving me just giving me my notes and trying different things mm -hmm. changing the arrangement of a cover tune or jo like singing joni mitchell songs and wow. you know what i mean it's yeah. that that we don't do so much anymore you know i will tell you i it, it to me i mean it's it's just such a celebration you know i yeah. love hearing this you know jennifer batten and i have talked about this a lot with michael jackson yeah. right you know jennifer, yeah just uh again you know she it was an education for her it, one of those people that just was so inspired that you would if he walked into the room in the back yeah. and nobody's looking at him the energy changes it and it stays with you with you forever right I, I would i would bet that there is princess dna in your soul right now that you know that mm -hmm. i uh you know I, it's it's just it's awesome and so i celebrate that man because he, uh, yeah we are so lucky to live in a time right where he's touched you know and all and and exponentially so with you but absolutely how did mantra come out then how did that evolve um mantra came about this was maybe the last year we had saw him physically and I was just kind of really on the fence. A lot of shit was changing for me. Um, unexpected that it did well. And my life was just shifting in a lot of ways. Um, not in the best, let's put okay. it that way. And so I had had, mantra was kind of almost written like maybe white stripe style it didn't have the thought of strings or anything. It was just drums, bass, guitar. Wow. Organ, like that, that's, that was it. And it was more like a cry of help for me to like, okay, here you are back in this space again, down on down, going on the down slope of this roller coaster. Um, you're by yourself now. You have nobody here to help. You have nobody to pull from anymore. So that's when I started to write like, okay, when you're by yourself, cause you know, you got to rock, you know, you have to walk the road alone, period. And, um, that's how mantra came about. And Ryan, I think we were in Atlanta and Ryan started playing these chords and I was like, could it be the price I'm going to pay the price I got to pay to move on. I have to move on, on alone, right? From Prince, from all of it. I have to move on by myself. So I think that was the catalyst to kind of like start Mantra. Wow. And then I think he heard it. We played it at the Iridium and just to test it, because I like to play my music live before yeah. I record it. Um, and he was like tripping. I hadn't talked to him in a while. And I don't, and uh, I think at that time, me and him were talking about doing a rock rock like for real rock record mm. um, and this was this was one of the songs i wanted to show him and i think this was when he was starting to move over doing the piano tour situation yeah. and then he heard it and he was like okay this is this is this is it right and so i'm glad he got to hear it and then after that four years later i left mantra alone and i didn't finish mantra until last year Wow. And that's why I said, I want to get strings on there. I want a whole, I want it to feel once again, kind of cinematic. Yeah. Um, I want the emotions to feel like a roller coaster, a high and a low, a drop drops. Yeah. That's my, what, that's my emotions. That's the shit that I'm going through. It's the high and lows, the, the, this too shall pass, right? The great right. stuff and the bad stuff. They yeah, both well, pass. You bet. Right. And it's like a roller coaster ride. And that's why I wanted Mantra to feel like, like you're going to have to face all of it. Yeah. You know, and you're going to have to keep pushing through all of it, you know? So, so yeah. Uh, amazing. Cause honestly, it's kind of prophetic for what's going on right now. Right. I mean, everybody yeah. in the planet 
is dealing with that right now. We're all at a point where there's a lot of self-reflection, right? Oh, and, and, right. And you talk about those, the highs and the lows, mm. there's a lot of adversity for people right now. And, yeah. and this is the kind of point where I think, and I've I mentioned this on conversations in the past, that if you really watch social media, you can mm. see people kind of coming apart at the seams in a lot of different areas. Yeah. You, you can choose to let this adversity break you and it's happening to some people, man, or you yep. can look, you can know this will pass. We're going to rise above, you know, and, Absolutely. and I, I love that mantra, you know, was, was sort of a, you know, a, a champion for that cause before this had happened is, Oh yeah. It yeah. Is, it is part of life, man. The, the ups and downs. And I, uh, it's amazing to talk to an artist who's that in touch with their feelings and expressive mm -hmm. and vulnerable about that stuff. Right. I, I mean, yeah. you know, I talked about the intimacy of it. That's true intimacy, right? Cause you're, yeah. you're wearing your heart on your sleeve. You're talking yeah. about your own experience. This is not, this, this is not writing lyrics for a concept. This is, Hey, this is where I'm at. Yeah. Um, was it helpful and cathartic to you to kind of, to put this out saying I needed my voice to be heard to express that this is what I've gone through in order to get past it. Yeah. 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 I, before I could do anything else, before I could write another record, before I put anything else out, I said I needed to put this out. Mm. I had to put this out. I had to put it out for, but this was without, and help is always war, is always wanted, you know, I, I, but I wanted to prove for myself that I can do this for myself. Yeah. And um, before I make any other music, I needed to put this out because I needed, this was my foundation, right? Because I feel like if I'm after this, when I put this out, <clears throat> everything else is going to ride on the base of this. Not necessarily the music, but at least I know I, this is my foundation and I've laid it. Yeah. Um, um, because if something doesn't go right, I can go back to this again and know that it's going to pass over you good. Yeah. yeah. And if the good stuff happens, that's going to pass too. Right. <laughs> And be ready for it. I can't celebrate it for a long time. It's great to celebrate it for a minute, but it's 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 going to keep life is going to keep cycling, yeah. and so I I just have to keep facing and keep walking forward and keep going forward. And I needed it. I needed to write mantra. And Ryan, I'm telling you, Ryan, Ryan, my boy. Yeah, that is my brother. He um he under we understand without talking. We understand emotionally and we get it like ryan just is uh, we, we just get it you know and he he, he hit it he wow. hit every emotion um all of it man he got, he got it for real what, for real. what a, no, man, you know what i almost said luck honestly i talked to a lot of conversations that i've had people have talked about the luck that they've had to get them where they're at and i i used to say i'm the luckiest guy on mm -hmm. the planet but I don't know anymore. I mean, I, I really feel like a lot of luck is what you make of it, being ready, putting yourself in positions or situations where you're ready for it. You, you talk about having prepared yourself for experiences with Prince and then introducing him with what you'd prepared, you know, why do you lie, having that dialed in. Yeah. Um, you, you already established these foundations, really healthy for you. You talk about having a baseline that you created with mm -hmm. Mantra saying, hey, if I put this out, um, it's almost like, you know, I, I give the analogy of climbing Everest, right? Mm -hmm. if, if Everest is the ultimate goal and you're mm -hmm. climbing this mountain of life, right? And you know, yeah, yeah. Um, you're determined, man. You're a driven person who, who learned tenacity early on as a gymnast, right? I'm mm -hmm. going up Everest and along the way, yeah, I'm going to have, you know, I got to cross over real bumpy, rocky spots. But if I put my baseline, my base camp up high enough, then I'm not going back down to the bottom, right? I'm yeah. not, yeah. not going to fall down the mountain without trying really hard and I've got a good baseline. Yeah. It's really healthy, you know, to hear yeah. that, that you recognize that yourself and the fact that you've got a good partner along the way to help you, man. I mean, if Ryan is this person that just has a, uh, they understand you, he's got your back, yeah. supports you, you know, he's fortunate to have you there too. Cause I would bet he'd say the same thing about the partnership with you, you know, yeah. what, a, what a gift, man. That's yeah. beautiful. Ryan is good people and uh, we've been through the trenches for real. Yeah. And not not necessarily not just Ryan. Like a lot of the people in my Portland family have truly, truly sacrificed with me when they are playing with me, yeah. and I appreciate every little bit of that 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 help. 
that yes. came along the way. We all know what it's like to be musicians. We we know the struggle. Yeah. And so I'm super appreciative of them taking that time to to go on that journey at the time with me. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Me yeah. figuring it out and and Ryan also sticking it out, you know what I mean? Like I, it's it's this is my calling for me. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like my purpose is, you know what I mean? To write and to, to, to share my vulnerability and maybe it will help somebody help somebody else because yeah, I like to write the, the party stuff, but, and uh, the feel good stuff, but I always write with some kind of personal intention or personal something involved in my music. Yeah. Um, Cause that's the only way that I know how to, how to, how to get it out, you know? Well, you so. certainly, you, you have, a connection with people that way mm -hmm. your voice is what a lot of people might be feeling but they could never express it that way you know mm -hmm. and i i i just it, it um ah it looks like i just lost live and that was a sad part to lose her um hopefully she can jump back in here um but let me uh let me i'm gonna invite her really quick god that uh that was pretty remarkable to hear her, you know, just uh, sharing these experiences. Sorry, it, it was, it's an emotional thing for me to hear her talking about this, man. Um, one sec here. Uh, if she, uh, she dials back in, I just sent her the invitation. And if not, um, let me just say that I'm going to have some links to both the unexpected, the single for Mantra, um, Embrace Me, her first record, and also uh, some links to her Portland community because I think it'd be um, pretty awesome to to share some of these stories with their local people. I think in a, a future conversation, there she is. Hello, hello, there she is again. Hello, hello, you cut your audio going again? All right, she's connected. Okay, on. here we go. Oh. Hi there. Thank you for hopping back on. The, uh, Technology. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was thinking maybe that's uh, the, uh, the universal clock telling me, Kevin? Stop being so chatty and just uh, shut up and let me <laughs> think. But you know what? The timing of that was crazy because I was talking about how the connection that you have with people with your music, it really is a way for them to, to um, they feel connected to your lyrics, even if they don't have the voice to express it. And yeah. man, you, you know, what a gift to be able to have that connection with anybody. And that's true pairing with your, your art, you know? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I really appreciate that. I I I think the all the guys, all the breakups, all the shitty friendships mm -hmm. <laughs> that, uh, for the inspiration. Yeah. Uh, but it all, you know, it's part of life. It is it is what it is. That so is. that's real stuff though. I mean we we've all had bad relationship, you know, situations and bad bosses and you know, so I um so if mantra was that baseline, where do you see then for this future of, of your next uh, evolution? Um, I am currently now working on uh, another album. I actually finished an album with the producer of June Moon in Paris. Mm. That was, I did a uh, a collaboration, which is really quite sick. It it kind of reminds me of a hybrid. Um, it's his album, but fe featuring me on it, but it it's kind of a hybrid of embrace me. Um, yeah, it's like a, I don't know. It feels like an embrace me 2.0 or something. It's really? a real project. Yeah. Okay. Cool. It's June moon. And then, um, yeah, I'm working on finishing my album for 2021. Okay. Um, I'm really excited about it. I I'm before I was really like trying to hone in on a sound that I want to do like, rock it it's i don't even really think it doesn't it doesn't matter what it is genre style i mean yeah. i just feel like genres because you have to let people understand or get it 
but my music is, is, is what it is and it's going to create itself to what it's come to be. So, um, I'm just excited about it. Of course, it's going to be guitars because I love guitars. Yeah. Probably a lot more strings this time. Okay. I love arrangements. I never really had a uh, focus on a lot of strings, more um, orchestrated stuff. Um, so a lot of that. Um, so I'm just trying to let it come to me as it as it as it does, you know, and fun with it and more ballad I okay. think. Um, so I'm gonna have fun with it. And I've also been uh, doing this documentary with Teen. Uh, teen time she shot my music video for mantra too she says oh. so i've been shooting my documentary for the past four or five years four or five years um following me through all of it really all of it yeah because i want people to see yeah every bit of it and um <laughs> it's not easy sure uh, situation um so well, i'm excited talk I'm about excited. vulnerability man i mean having somebody come out and share you know, like walking the day with you. It's not just showing everybody what you want them to see, but if you're doing documentary style while she's following you, that's warts and all, man. Oh my God. This it's it's some funny stuff. It's breakdowns. It's just it's truth, you yeah. know? And um so yeah, so I'm I'm just really, really, really looking forward to a lot of stuff coming up. Yes. I'm just next phase once we're past all of this what's going on, but it's also forced me, um, it just forced me to think about myself as a whole, what I haven't been doing, what I should have done right in the past. And yeah. Stuff like that. And I'm sure it's forcing everybody to reflect, you know, yeah. what to do better when we come out of this, because e either you're going to come out strong, ready to, you know, yeah. Yeah. you know, or you just going to be, you know, this is the time for us to kind of get, get strong. Get yeah, strong. yeah, so. I, I love it. Yeah, I I had said in the past too that this could either allow you to feel like a victim or to be able to to really develop some strength from this. And I agree with you, man. Do you, like the better way, the healthy way, is to come out with some, you know, learn yeah. something from it. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. feel like I got that just from you in the last hour. You know, oh. honestly, I mean, I I am really excited to see where this goes with you. You know, hey. I'm just I. I'm proud of the mark that you left on the Portland scene, and uh, yeah, man, I um, I I look forward to the time when we're able to come out and see some live music. Cannot yeah. wait to see the next chapter of Live Warfield. I think it's going to be a beautiful thing. Thank you so much. I man. really appreciate. It. This was amazing. Thank you. Thank you, man. Um, do me a favor and uh, and send me. Um, I, I'd love to for people to be able to. Uh, to be able to get a hold of some of this, uh, you know, the new music. Are you, does livewarfield.com, does that have all their, your most recent uh, yeah, live, offerings? Um, dot com. Special seven inch vinyl of Mantra um, that's out. I still have unexpected for sale um, on livewarfieldofficial.com. So go there, please get the vinyls. They're really, really cool. cool. Uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm a, uh, I uh, am just super excited about everything that's 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 about to happen right now. You oh, know, that's so cool, man. Yeah. I'm I'm proud of you, girl. I thank you, thank you for, you know, thank you to the pets and your husband for uh, putting up with oh, us for. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I didn't know he was coming home. I was like, oh, surprise. You know, that's cool. I was gonna, if he was gonna pop in again, I was gonna say hey, but uh, uh, but thank him for sharing the time with us. I appreciate it. Yeah. I uh, live okay so I'll uh, I'll make sure that in when we re I'll repost this and I'll get links to this on the website where we can point people to live warfieldofficial.com get a hold of the mantra the mantra vinyl and um unexpected if you don't have unexpected my god get out there and get it it's so good but I uh I'm just glad to see you weathering the storm you're you're kicking ass and I'm proud of you thank you I'm trying <laughs> Man, live I mean it. Thank you. I'll, I'll be uh, be looking forward to seeing you soon. Okay. All right. Thank you for the time, hon. No problem. Okay. Bless you. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.